The ARRL and the FCC realized that amateur stations might also serve as a beacon. Therefore, from the beginning, amateurs were urged to keep watch on 640 or 1240 kilocycles and to kill their transmitters when the alarm was given. With the importance of Conelrad in the early 1950s, it's surprising that amateurs were not required to monitor for the Conelrad alarm. This was rectified on January 2nd, 1957, when the FCC amended Part 12 of the Rules and Regulations to require the following. All operators of stations in the amateur radio service will be responsible for the reception of the Conelrad radio alert by monitoring 640 or 1240 kilocycles. During a Conelrad radio alert, all operators of amateur radio stations will cease communications immediately. Stations operating under the Radio Amateur Civil Emergency Service, RACES, and other stations specifically authorized would be allowed to remain on the air under the following conditions. No transmission would be made unless it is of extreme emergency affecting the national safety or the safety of life and property. Transmissions would be as short as possible. No station identification or location would be given. Tactical calls would be utilized if necessary. And the radio station carrier would be discontinued during periods of no message transmission. Amateur stations were not allowed back on the air until the Conelrad radio all-clear message was transmitted.